Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org with a video tutorial for the new Boston. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the height and width properties in jQuery and how we can retrieve the height and the width of any particular element. Uh, obviously, we can also then apply this to the document window or the document itself or the browser window and the document itself. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is create a div on the page uh, and we'll just put some content in here. It doesn't really matter uh, what we do. Um, with regards to the ID, let's go ahead and give it a name of something just like div, something generic. Uh, I'm then going to go ahead and style this uh, so we can actually set uh, some properties to it ourselves. So the first thing I'm just going to do is give it a background color uh, just so we can see uh, the sort of physical height and width of it. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and actually set a height and width to it. So I'm going to give it 100 pixel and the width I'm going to give it 250 pixels. So on our page now we can see uh, that we've got a, a div here with some content and it's 250 width and 100 height. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead uh, and in actual fact probably better to get rid of this content and I'm going to replace the content inside of the div with the height and the width of the div. So we uh, come over to ext.js which I have included on my page as well as jQuery and we can start to write our code out in here. So I'm first of all going to say document.ready just when the DOM's loaded and we are ready to start um, you know, start outputting. We just do this usually in, J uh, in jQuery. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and set uh, two variables. The first is div height. And this is going to be equal to, and we're going to reference or we're going to select this div, and that's just called div. So we can go ahead and say hash div. And all we need to do is go ahead and apply the height property. So, uh, yeah, I knew I'd spell that wrong. So yeah, okay, now we're going to go ahead and get the width. So we do exactly the same thing, uh, but this time, obviously, uh, it's quite easy to guess. We would just apply dot .width to the end. So now I'm going to go ahead and output this to the div itself, so div.text. And in here, I can go ahead and write something like um, width. Yeah, that's right. Width x and or width x height x. So x, I'm just going to go ahead and replace with uh, by appending this on, uh, and I'm going to replace the div width, and I'm going to do the same with x. So I can just append this on to the end of this string, uh, and that is div height. So this is obviously in pixels. When we refresh, you can see that we get a representation of the div width and the div height. There are other ways to do this. For example, we could go ahead and use the CSS property. Uh, so we could go ahead and use CSS here uh, and then supply uh, or ask for the height. And we could go ahead and then say CSS and then supply width in there. Uh, and what this will do is it will return more or less the same thing, but you'll see that we'll get the PX on the end of it. Um, and the there's two ways that why this is unreliable and may require more processing power. Uh, the reason being is that, for example, if we were to uh, use this and we wanted to use it as an integer, this doesn't return it as an integer, it only returns with uh, the absolute value in the style.css file uh, or the, the CSS that's applied to it. So what we would need to do is go ahead and use parse int. Now obviously the first uh, downfall of this or the uh, downside to this is that we're unnecessarily processing uh, this uh, and passing it as an integer. And parse int's just going to obviously pass the value as an integer and just go ahead and remove px. Uh, so we can we can do it that way, but you know why write this, all this out when it's completely unnecessary? Uh, and you could go ahead and use the width and height options uh, like this and like this. So uh, the other reason that we would go ahead and do it like this is because we might not have predefined a, uh, a height and a width to this div. For example, the content might have filled up the div to the point where uh, it's at a size that we haven't defined. You know, the content might 
not overlap, but push the div and create more width or more height to it. So using height and width will always return an integer, which is one benefit, less processing power uh, and not having to use pass in. And the other benefit is that it will get the height and the width reliably, to, you know, regardless of the content that we add. So for example, uh, at the moment you can see it's width 250 and height 100. If I was to go ahead and inside of the div write, um, let's just say text and then break and let's just copy and paste this a few times and then in the ext change this to append because we obviously don't want to rewrite over our content uh, you can now see that oh okay yeah so right uh, let's just go ahead and get rid of style in here so we have a div now that will just sort of like overflow the content uh, you can now see that the you know the properties have changed for this we've got different width I'm not sure what oh that's just because it uh, automatically went to the edge of the document 